Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Roberto Joseph. I'm an associate professor at Hofstra University. I direct the educational technology programs and I'm really looking forward up to working with you in uh, the upcoming months on game design. So we've got a, two workshops um, one planned for the elementary ed teachers and another one planned for uh, secondary teachers. But before I get into that, I want to just give you a little um, background about me, talk to you about uh, some of our ed tech programs, and, and then we'll, you know, we'll get into the specifics of, of the, the game design courses. So I've, I've been a professor here at Hofstra for um, nine years now. I teach educational technology. My focus area is really on um, game design and specifically app development. And, um, you know, that's really going to make its way in the next two to three years. You'll find it more and more coming into, into schools because we have iPads coming in and all kinds of mobile devices. And so, you know, one of the natural things is since there's such a focus on apps, apps, is to get kids to not only playing the games and the applications uh, through apps, but to also get them to develop their own apps. And for you as teachers to develop apps um, for your students that are customized and catered to what you're doing. So it's a nice enhancement um, to the materials that you're already using. And so um, that's really the focus of the workshops uh, is to get you to think about different applications that you might be able to create and customize for your classroom okay so having said that um, again I want to point you to my website here um, it's people.hofstra.edu and if uh, forward slash Roberto underscore Joseph okay and slash index.html and you get here and on here you'll see my you know um, picture and there's a video of me there um, you can read you know the background on on me and find out all kinds of other stuff here uh, also my publications you can actually download them these are all links uh, if you're interested in that um, and you know, my teaching um, and outreach that I've done and my Vita if you want to go ahead and download my Vita okay it's pretty long I gotta warn you it's you know over 10 pages long Okay, now in terms of the uh, programs, I'm really excited to talk to you a little bit about our new uh, master's program in technology for learning. And it's a brand new program. Actually, 50% of it is online, and um, the other 50% of it is face to face. So the online component are all the ed tech courses, the face to face component are whatever you're initially certified in. Okay, so this is a program um, we're trying to recruit actually for the fall, um, and um, it's a program targeted to initially certified teachers. Okay, we also really quickly, I won't spend too much time on that, really quickly, we also have an advanced certificate in ed tech if you're interested. It's a 15 to 18 credit hour program depending on if you have the uh, initial uh, course in educational technology. So, um, so that's pretty much it with the component of... Um, our educational technology programs. And so if you have any questions about them, please feel free um, to contact me. Okay, I want to give you an idea of the game making tools that are available out there and um, sort of the level of difficulty where um, each of these game making tools lie. And so um, on the lower end of the spectrum, um, Game making tools like GameStar Mechanic, which is totally online, um, it's totally web based. There is a part that you have to uh, pay for, but there's a sub substantial free part that you and your students could actually um, get right in. So there, it's sort of a game making curriculum, um, and it's sort of a game in you know that you're embedded in. So you learn to create games while playing within a game environment. So it's a pretty interesting tool. Um, to start out with, Kodu, Microsoft Kodu, this little icon is the Microsoft Kodu icon, um, is, is another one um, that's, that's an interesting tool, um, which it's a 3D environment. So um, that's a, a possibility uh, for us as well. Um, Game Salad is, you know, one that I've been working with a lot lately. I've actually created a couple of apps with it. And um, I said, if, 
from fifth grade and up, I think it's it's a really good tool to work with. Um, I'm going to skip over here to this icon of the cat here, which is the scratch cat. Um, this is a tool based out of MIT. Uh, and Scratch uh, is a program that's really powerful uh, based on Seymour Papert's work. Uh, it a tool that really is for the younger um, kids. So I would say anywhere from about um, third or fourth grade and up okay can get started on this so as teachers for elementary teachers we'll be focusing on uh, the use of scratch so as you can see there are other tools um, the further up you go on the spectrum um, the more abstract these tools are okay and so um, the further to the left you go and down um, the more hands-on easy to use uh, um, they are so as I said we're probably going to be working with Game Salad and Scratch um, on the work, uh, you know, in our time together. So secondary teachers, Game Salad, elementary teachers, Scratch. So I'd like to focus on the workshops that are targeted to elementary educators. Um, the workshop is really introducing you to the process of designing and developing animations and simple educational games. Okay, so the tool that we'll be learning is a tool called Scratch, and it's a programming language that was developed by the lifelong kindergarten group at the MIT Media Lab. Okay, it really makes it easy to create simple animations and games with your with your students. All right, so um, let me take you through um, a screenshot here of what the environment, the design environment looks like. So here is Scratch the Cat. And you'll be able to, and your students will be able to um, design your own artwork. Um, there's, a, there's a painting tool embedded in the program. And basically you can then program um, all the objects that you create to do different things. So whether it's a storybook that you're making, um, or even a game that you want to make, um, you know, let's say a, a mathematical Pac-Man game or something. Um, you know, you can do that kind of stuff in, in Scratch. And so this is, you know, what you see is what you get screen here. And then on the left side here, you'll see all the different pieces that you can actually drag and drop into your programming space. So there's no written coding really involved. Um, it's all a drag and drop process okay and uh, within that drag and drop process like right now we're looking at the, all the motion tools and everything is color coordinated so kids really pick up on it really quickly to know oh, okay the purple is motion I get all my tools for motion the you know controls are in orange I get all my um, tools for uh, in, in orange so everything is color coded so it makes it really easy to do some basic programming so this is the tool we'll be using for the elementary educators. I'm sure you'll, you'll really enjoy it. So this is the scratch.mit.edu website where you can go and actually download Scratch. It's a free tool. Um, and once you come to the site, you know, you can sign in and, and download um, the software. But I want to show you uh, an example project, a sample project here that one of my students created for learning the um, multiplication table. So we did a prototype for multiplying um, um, with the number five. And so she created a, um, a program that was called the Hive Five. So um, if you, let me see if I can expand this here so you can see this a little bit better. Okay, so you can see how to play um, and then you get to some directions here. Takes you back to the introduction there and then if you hit the play button, I'll just spend a couple of minutes to show you how this works. Okay, there's your bee and you have you know flowers here, a couple seconds it'll start. So the B goes to the first flower and it says, you know, what is five times one? And then you enter 
the answer is five and you hit the enter key and buzz buzz that's right five times one is five then it takes you to the next one what is five times two very simple so you can see you can do some simple animations you can get some input with checking of answer and immediate feedback as well so really important sort of design principles are embedded here and that you can create so um, that's the idea so here's the next one five times three fifteen okay and enter and then that's right and so you get immediate feedback and you kind of go on until it gets to the hive so again this is freely available if you're interested you can take a look at this um, it's called the high five again this particular one that my student created and you will find it on the scratch.mit.edu website where you can also download the software okay okay so now what i'm going to show you um, in particular for educators for secondary educators game salad is a um, good program to get started with um, programming okay so anywhere from fifth grade and up now this what you're looking at here is inside or under the hood of one of the games that my students have created and it's actually available on the app store apple app store um, it's called circuit math hd well let's go ahead and play the game hit the green button here plays the game and hit the play button um, then an animation will begin and so the idea is you have to get the two circuits underneath here have to add up to the circuit above and that's simple as that that's for every circuit on the board so let's start really simple with a level one and when we hit the start button you notice that it shuffles and so if we start out, let's say, with the highest number on top, which is what you want to do, um, then the two numbers underneath these have to add up to 26. So that's pretty easy to find. So 14 and 12, so the two add up to 26, right? Now we need two numbers here to add up to 14. So uh, let's try 7 and 7 then we need another number here we have to use this 7 and another number that must add up to 12 for this circuit so I've got 5 here okay and then um, you, you do the same thing you work your way down until you finish the game and so that's pretty much um, circuit math okay so um, I'll finish this up here so, uh, let's try there it is. That's the game. So let's take a look under the hood. All right. So this is where, when you come in, when you first want to create your game, you give the name, a title, um, the description of the game, all this kind of front end stuff, instructions that you do really before you even get to the computer. And so then you say, well, what kind of, uh, what platform is going to be on? This one's iPad Landscape. If I click on here, I can make an iPhone game, a Nook game, Kindle Fire, a Mac game, all kinds of different formats, as you can see. Okay, then if you click on, this is the project info, if you click over here, you get all the scenes. So this is, in essence, all the levels of my game that have to be designed. So you want students creating those levels, the artwork for it, and so on and so forth. The actors in essence are all the game pieces that have to be created okay and kids have to create that artwork and, and, and put that together okay so um, tables we really won't get too much into in, in, in our workshop it's a more of an advanced um, level but we will definitely talk about it okay um, now so okay so you've got the pieces you got everything but now you have to program it to tell it what to do Okay, so let's take a look at one of these scenes so you can see what that looks like. Um, let's take a look at one of these game screens, let's say the additional level one scene. Okay, so now as you can see, um, I've got all my circuits up here, and then there's my the actual game screen that you, you can see, and then there's some programming involved here with each of these things. So let me just click on these so let's to get a sense of um, what's involved here and, and what the programming environment looks like and so um, here are basically draggable items that you can bring in and 
every object has what you call attributes. And so these are all the draggable items. So if I want to animate something, for example, we won't do that now, but I'm just going to show you, you know, how easy it is. So you kind of just drag and drop, you get an animate system, and in this box you just literally would bring in each of the different clips of your animation at each step. So that would go in this box. And it's simple as that, and it will do the work for you. And so you just kind of put in, so, you, so the students obviously would have to do the work of drawing each of the frames. And once you put them in there, um, you know, you can adjust the speed and everything, and then you can have the actor either running, jumping, you know, all kinds of stuff that you can need stuff. So kids love this a animate feature, okay? And so you literally, and it tells you, if you click on each of these things, it tells you the directions of what each thing is doing. So drag and drop a sequence of images that have been imported into your project library. So it's as simple as that, okay? So again, it's a draggable um, environment where you're bringing... Um, these in so it's not that much coding it's more of moving things around and understanding the logic of the game okay what you want to do okay so that in essence is game salad okay this is what we'll be using for the um, secondary teachers workshop